Welcome to Kevin Yeager's Crypt of Horrors. Makeup effects specialist Kevin Yeager designed the noseless host and directed the Crypt Keeper segments on HBO's dark humored series, Tales from the Crypt. Now that the show has completed a five year run, the ambitious artist relishes rumors of a crypt shift to the big screen. We, we have exhausted pretty much everything in that crypt. What I like to do is, is the feature films. In this way, you know, thinking of ideas of getting them out into a graveyard, digging up graves, you know, and things like that. And full body shots, being able to direct those wraparounds would be a great, great thing. At 31, Jaeger's work on films like Child's Play and Honey, I Blew Up the Kid has put him on a short list of specialists working steadily in Hollywood. But Jaeger learned the ropes in the industry trenches like everyone else. I came out here from Ohio and did everything pretty much, you know, with rubber bands and, and toothpicks, you know, back in, in uh, my hometown. But when I came out here, I learned how Hollywood did things, and I learned, I picked up things up really quickly, trying to, you know, advance, you know, and, and uh, create things on my own. Jurassic Park threw Hollywood's effects industry for a loop with the success of its computer animation. And while Jaeger isn't interested in jumping on the technology bandwagon, he has mapped out an alternative course of action. I'm not an animator, and I don't want to sit behind a computer. You know, I want to get my hands into things. But the way I feel about it is that they'll always need the artist, who is the, the conceptual person. So maybe I'll just be doing less, getting less involved with chemicals and hurting myself. At the same time, you know, I can design and, and just uh, hopefully ask more money. On the recent canine thriller, Man's Best Friend, Jaeger made a dozen mechanical doubles of a Tibetan Mastiff. These substituted for real dogs in the difficult-to-film scenes. But because the film's ending was toned down, audiences never got to see some of his best work. We ended up uh, scrapping all these designs. I did this design of this skinned dog where his muscles and his bones and patches of hair and he, half of his face was burned away and his bottom jaw was exposed and all this and his eye was blind. It was great. Jaeger's hard work often gets minimum screen time or can end up on the cutting room floor. Even though this is just par for the course in the film industry, it's still difficult to swallow. That's the one thing that I think the, the biggest thing I had to get over when I got into this business. You think to yourself, why did I put so much into it? But the way I look at it is if, if those three seconds end up being uh, an extreme close-up, I've got to be able to put all, I, I should put all of that detail into this in case it is seen very close. A positive attitude does pay off. Jaeger says he's gotten more than one job because of his attention to detail. But he says the one thing you really need to survive in this competitive field is... A strong back. You need a strong back. When you're applying makeup in a chair, you really do. Not one to sit idle, Jaeger has a career wish list for the new year. He hopes to direct an updated version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow that he's written. Then there's the rumored Tales from the Crypt feature. And he's not ready to toss aside his truest passion. I love making characters, I think, and uh, want to keep doing that, whether it's directing or, uh, you know, writing. I'm writing right now, so, uh, and trying to direct. So as long as I'm able to tell stories and, and, and uh, create characters, I'll be a happy man. The guys came in from special effects and said, oh, have you seen your head yet? It's great, look. And we pulled it out of a box. Well, I... Talk about intimations of mortality, you know. I've seen my head in somebody's hand. Tim wanted to see the head spin around. So we have a head and shoulders piece that we do the head mech spinning thing. And then we cut to a wide shot, and that's a full body that's all held together with electromagnets. And we basically flip a switch, and the knees will buckle first, then the ankles, and then the waist and the arms will fall down. So we have a very, very natural look. cover you up and if it's like any minute they're gonna stick two straws up your nose and suck your brains out all the heads are silicone painted the hairs have been punched in individually um, eyeballs are put in and we'll take teeth casts of the actors and then make acrylic teeth and fit them in and each head will have this kind of gross uh, muscle treatment and you can about at one point finds a suture in the tree and he sees a little trickle of what he thinks is sap and ends up becoming blood. And he takes an axe to it, breaks it wide open. And uh, he finds these heads. Well, besides lopping off dozens of heads and creating the headless bodies to go with them, we had to build several types of animal effects, uh, including a dead crow, a uh, lifelike cardinal, and even a mechanical flapping, screeching vampire bat.
did a mechanical horse from like the knees on up that Christopher Walken sat on. The mechanism itself was built for um, a national velvet and we reskinned it, referred it, uh, mechanized the, the head so that it would move and uh, the ears would wiggle and the eyes would blink and stuff like that. And we blew steam out the, the nose and things like that. Well, this is pretty much a war picture. Instead of human against human, it was the humans against alien bugs. We built over 50 dead soldiers along with uh, maybe a dozen makeup effects to give the film a very gruesome reality. You couldn't overdo the blood element with Paul. He's the kind of guy that seems to want more of everything. Okay, let's go ahead and one take like this and then we change the lens, yeah? Start with your eyes less aggressive so that your eyes grow as you face her. Two and three. Good. Who's five? <laughs> 